I'm working on my Rostock RepRap 3D printer. This is a frame that was given to me. Um, the guy who built it wasn't happy with it, went and bought himself a uh, CNC, me CNC Rostock Max, Rostock Max, and uh, loving this. But this one's got a custom plexi frame sides top it's pretty neat I like it that doesn't belong on there um, so it's a you know a Delta type frame what you have is you have a motor at the bottom of every tower and then uh, pulley at the top you feed it with a, a, a Bowden tube. You run the filament through the tube. Um, what I've got going on here is I got my, my Maker Gear uh, root extruder. I put a uh, quick release style release on it just because I wanted to. I wanted to try it. Um, I'm feeding through the plexi. I'm just bolting it to one of the slots, feeding it through the plexi, and I have a just a bolt on this side with a, an adapter for the tube. Just slides in right now. I am going to wire lace the tube to this block, and actually I have this block and this block switched right now because if you look closely this block I have holes drilled in it that's for the lacing to go through so I can come down and pull this tight but there's an ever so slight gap here enforced by the washers so on this one I can actually go between the two blocks it's tight here because the um, the hot end tip which I just have just the, the peak installed the hot end tip comes up tight to this piece so I just shimmed it with washers but that gives me enough gap I can run my lacing underneath and, and tie here lace the length of this tie here and that should give me a um, no pop out Bowden tube in theory um, if it doesn't work, I'll try something different. Um, I just have a tote in back just because it's a clear case and it's hard to see with all the clutter behind it. But one of the things I want to do is I want to use the rest of these rods. And with the belts that I have, it's uh, this is as high as I can go and belt it. Um, and not hit this pulley or this pulley. I'd have like a, about a five inch gap that I'd run the belts. Um, so I'd have to pick up, make this longer somehow and do that. But I was uh, running my mouth on uh, the Rostock uh, Freenode IRC and came up with an idea, a hybrid belt um, fishing line, braided fishing line system. Um, most people don't like the that don't like the fishing line. Don't like it because it stretches. Um, so I just added more layers. So there's actually four threads here, and uh, that way I can stretch. I can use the the belt system with the pulley and the, and the teeth. These are, you know, store-bought injection molding pulleys. Nice pulleys. Match the belt perfectly. But I can run this all the way up. So I can actually slam that carriage right to the bottom. And the pulley comes to the top. 
and it comes to the bottom and if I go the other way I run it right up to the end stop and I've got just a little bit of room here and I've got room here so what this tells me is I can make my frame taller right to the top of the smooth rods and uh, I could use the same belt that I have. Um, you really only need a belt that would be as long as your smooth rod at that point doing it this system. We've got both sides, two of the three sides done. Um, the little brass ferrules are just a little bit of brass and they cut off with a cutoff wheel and uh, deburred so it wouldn't uh, cut to the, the fishing line. Um, and I'm thinking this will work. Trying different things. I mounted this extra on this end here. Don't like that. I like it the extra mounted here and then I just zip tied it to the inside. I don't want to cut this at the moment because uh, well I want to make this taller. So if I get away with uh, not cutting the belts at all and tuck them so where they don't don't collide here, this is a uh, one spot I'm going to have trouble with as it's going to want to collide here. So I got to come up with something there. It's really bad on this side. So this one probably will get redone, but uh. see the belts are kind of tight not real tight but I can tighten them I'm using a, a zip tie tightener and uh, I just grab a pliers here to hold this and then grab a needle nose here and pull uh, you work the two against and then this will tighten up and uh, so far it's working um, Something else I want to add is my favorite tool for putting these printers together is actually a cat nail clipper because uh, it doesn't have a sharp end so I could reach in and and grab stuff you know if I wanted to grab that zip tie I could grab just that zip tie um, and not scratch the metal so I don't have to worry about scratching a smooth rod or I grab just the bits and pieces I want. Um, it's great for cutting zip ties and stuff like that, but it's really good for cutting filament. This is a edge cut with a very sharp um, side cutters, a little uh, precision one, and it's got a slight pitch. You probably can't see it in the video, but if I cut it with the oh no, this is the side cutter one. But if I cut it with the um, nail clippers, because it comes and, and gets almost all the way around, I get a very square cut, and it uh, makes a nice, nice snap sound. So uh, this is my uh, where I'm at with my Ross talk. Um, I'm gonna change this a little bit. I'm going to make it work first and then I'm going to make it right. So um, this one I'm going to run uh, solar powered. Um, I'm going to got some solar panels setting up in the garage. I'm going to run a couple deep cycle batteries. Um, 12 volt this thing you know the ramps board runs on 12 volt so it's a natural fit. And it should give me uh, a lot of oomph when I put a heated bed on it. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I've already got this really nice cage frame around the printer. And so I'm going to do a heated build chamber for ABS. I'm going to run a 4 inch pipe into this fan. And that pipe's going to go to the uh, solar hot air heater that I have heating my garage right now. Um, I'm getting about 130 degree air coming out of that 
hot air panel. Um, I figure by the time it comes all the way across the garage and down here, it might be a little bit cooler, but I should be able to make a nice warm heated area here. Um, obviously, I'll put a door in front, and then I'm going to put some sort of trim on this three on the three uh, axes here um, of the towers, just so it stays a little bit more enclosed. Um, and the other thing that's going to happen with this printer is because it's got the um, top and the rods are vertical and not horizontal, the dust and stuff like that from the woodworking and whatnot I do in the shop will uh, not stick to the printer. So this will be my uh, my outdoor shop printer and I can do uh, ABS without stinking uh, everybody out of the house because it's in the basement right now. So that is my uh, my big plans for this guy, and uh, keep my uh, Maker Gear producer running. Started printing more parts. I'm gonna make uh, this a lot taller. I got uh, new vertexes that will actually clip on here. You can see it'll make the printer couple inches taller. So this will gain a little bit of height, um, but it will be nothing compared to what this guy can do. Um, right now, run all the way up. It's uh, 16 inches from the bottom of the effector to the aluminum plate. So I'll get another probably close to 6 inches. That would be 24 inches. You know, you lose some with the hot end. Um, and then you lose some with the heated bed on top of the aluminum. So I'm hoping, you know, easy 20 inch print height. Uh, 18 inch print height, I should say. So we shall see.